Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris from SPCI. Thank you for taking time to attend today's session on accelerating retail digitalization. As we enter a phase of rapid recovery post-pandemic, we wanted to find out from leading members of the retail and F&B industry how they have pivoted their operations over the last two years to gear up for growth. In today's session, uh, in partnership with SPTEL, we are pleased to invite Hux Coffee as well as Singapore Pools to find out more about their views on digitalization, the challenges they face in their journey, as well as their insights on how others in the industry can also benefit from the technology adoption. Our first speaker for today is Ms. Susan Lowe, uh, Vice President for Marketing, Strategic Business Development and Customer Experience. Susan is actually a passionate leader with more than 20 years of telecommunications experience in sales, product and business development. Her career has spanned many exciting domains such as cloud computing, software as a service, cybersecurity and IoT. Within SPTEL, she has spearheaded the launch of Singapore's first IoT platform as a service, IoT AAS. Most recently, Susan has led the launch of a documentary titled Homegrown with a Digital Age with CNA, which have won the CMO Asia Award for Excellence in Brand Innovation. Without further ado, I shall hand over the time to Susan to kickstart today's session. Susan, over to you. Hi, thank you, Chris. Yeah, just give us a, some time to load the slides. Okay, hi everyone. <clears throat> and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are pleased to have the opportunity to speak with you in this webinar organized by SCCI. I'm very glad to have you uh, with us today. Um, Hao Ming, MD of Hux Cafe and Jonathan, uh, head of the Transformation Program Office at Singapore Pools to share the stage with me. Before we deep dive into their digital transformation stories, I'd like to take this chance to give you a quick introduction on uh, SPTEL. Okay, at SPTEL, we are more than just a telco. We see ourselves as a business class digital service provider, and our mission is to enable customers to accelerate their digital digitalization goals with innovative solutions that deliver reliability with an age. We are new in the market. In fact, uh, we have been around for over 20 years. We were a fully owned Singapore Power Group entity in 1999 and started as a wholesale fiber communication network and base station hosting provider. In July 2017, we became a joint venture between STE and SP Group. The objective of the JV was to transform SPTEL into a digital service provider to enable government and enterprise organization in their digital transformations, as well as to support smart nation initiatives. Today, we are the only pure business-to-business -business digital service provider in Singapore that specializes in connectivity services. Therefore, we are very focused on delivering unparalleled performance for our network. With our unique access to Singapore power infrastructure assets, we are able to lay our fiber alongside the power grid and also house our infrastructure within substation island-wide. Since the start of the joint venture, we have rolled out many firsts that are unique to SPTEL. From being a dark fiber provider, we have enhanced our solution offerings to include cutting edge solutions such as an end-to-end -end software defined network, IoT as a service platform with ready LoRaWAN network, edge cloud or edge computing, and multi-network managed mobility solutions. Our reach has also expanded. We provide island-wide coverage with our SDN software defined network and can support global businesses with our international network coverage of 80 countries and 280 cities worldwide. From an IoT perspective, we are rolling out a heartland-based LoRaWAN network. LoRaWAN stands for a low-powered uh, wide area network to support IoT deployment. Finally, we also support managed mobility services island-wide within Singapore and international roaming coverage as well. So what sets us apart? Firstly, we would like to invite our customer to rethink how reliable their network can be with our diverse network that is physically separate from the incumbents. 
we also ask you to reimagine what your network can do with digitalized network services such as bandwidth and cybersecurity on demand on an end-to-end software-defined network. Finally, we are redefining your application performance with distributed edge hubs for edge computing. So now I would like to take you through a simple slide to illustrate how our strengths can come together to support a more resilient smart city network. At our core, our network is physically separated from the rest, which means that we use an alternative fiber route to connect and even enter the buildings. This means that when there is a fiber card on shared infrastructure, our services will not be impacted. This gives you true network diversity for maximum uptime for your business. We have also built our network to ensure less than one millisecond latency island-wide to give you the performance you need, especially for mission critical applications. Our digitalized service uh, means that we can provide dynamic resource allocation on demand for bandwidth and cybersecurity to meet your business requirements. With cybersecurity concern on the rise, we have ensured that our network is a clean pipe network. So DDoS attack alerts are provided as a default for all our customers. You can then choose to mitigate on demand to reduce the impact of the cyber attack. Finally, we have numerous edge nodes around the island to perform edge computing nearer to industries, events, and people. This allows for improved application performance without the hassle of maintaining and managing your own servers. Our edge cloud further enhances our IoT as a service offering. When deploying IoT solution on our platform, users simply need to provide the sensors and we will take care of the rest. From IoT gateway to the device management platform, edge computing resources and network backhaul. These strengths have also won us many awards over the years, with the most notable being APAC Asia Pack Insider naming us the Telecom Innovator of the Year for two years running. Besides this, we were also featured in a CNA documentary, Homegrown with a Digital Age, where we showcase customer success stories with the lights of AB Farm and Sing Shong. Today, we are bringing you the continuation of this sharing in this seminar with our new Homegrown with a Digital Age Leaders sharing series. Do enjoy the transformation journey sharing by Hux and Singapore Pools coming up next. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you for your helping us to set the stage for today's session. So, so without further ado, let me, uh, uh, let me just give a quick introduction to our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Hao Ming, which is the Managing Director and Partner of Hearts Coffee, one of Singapore's largest homegrown specialty coffee brand with over 20 outlets and its very own roastery and bakery. He is responsible for managing the business growth and building the brand culture that focuses on flavor, people, and doing good. Prior to joining Hearts, he was one of the co-founders for the widely popular Artbox Singapore and did many lifestyle events, both locally and regionally, such as bringing Taiwan's Shiling Night Market to Singapore. Hao Ming is a proud recipient of the prestige 40 under 40 in 2017 as a result of the success of the art box. Due to his experience in event management, he is also currently the strategic advisor for Event Midas, which specializes in esports events. Hao Ming has a keen passion in supporting youth development, which drove him to pledge as a mentor for use with the mentoring. Alliance of Singapore and a partner of a tuition center as his main date to create positive impact for the younger generations in what little ways he can. Uh, now we shall go into the interview segment with Hao Ming. Hi, I'm Susan the VP of Marketing, Business Development and Customer Experience of SPTEL. Today, I'm very glad that we have Mr. Li Hao Ming, MD of Hux Coffee with us today. So Hao Ming, good morning yeah. and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Susan. 
thanks for having me here. Uh, I mean, really an honor to be part of this series. Uh, I'm the managing director of Hux Coffee. Before I even joined Hux Coffee, I was in the lifestyle events industry. Um, you know, for about three to four years. So, if you remember pre-COVID days where we have events, um, I brought in Artbox from Thailand to Singapore. Mm. Uh, so I was one of the co-founders of uh, Artbox Singapore. I am also, you know, basically passionate about mentoring. So I'm actually a mentor in uh, Mentoring Alliance of Singapore as well, oh. uh, to help with certain of the youths in, in schools, to just, you know, give them a head start. Before we begin, could you please give us a little bit of background on Hux Coffee? Hux Coffee is not something new in Singapore. We've been around since 2008. Uh, you know, basically 14 years already as of now. We're mainly found in the CBD area of the business districts. Um, you know, we're a homegrown brand, we're a local brand. We specialize in uh, East meets West kind of beverage, which means that we have that local range all the way to your specialty range as well. Since pre-COVID uh, till now, uh, a lot have changed uh, due to the pandemic. So Hux, we have basically restructured the business quite a bit and actually uh, pivoted as well. You know, as mentioned, I was you know all our outlets were were found in the CBD or business district. So obviously, pandemic hit us really, really you know really huge in in, in many ways. So. We restructured the business, rebranded ourselves as well, and then actually expanded our business to the residential area uh, over the past 18 months. So just 10 new outlets in the residential area in the last one year. We also expanded into the business of um, more manufacturing business as well, and the B2B. We have our own roastery, we have our own bakery as well. So uh, that gives us different avenues to actually um, basically expand into different uh, market areas you know, on different demographics, different customers or client base, uh, and gives us an age above, um, I guess, gives us that kind of flexibility to actually adapt to any changes as we, you know, march forward to the, the future, right? What are the key things that you feel you made the right decision on that is crucial to your success? I think it starts off with the right mentality that we had uh, uh, when, we, when I first entered into here. You know, the, the, the team that I, I built, you know, the mentality, the, the attitude, the, the mindset was very different. We're willing to change, we're willing to, to, to have the courage to try. I think we're willing to have the, the, the basically to think out of the box, you know, uh, and be different about things, right? So I think with that, we already started uh, on the right path. So it's, it's a big leap of faith um, and that really I think took us to the next level very much. But of course we did a, a very deep um, a SWOT analysis in terms of the business, right? And identify what are our weaknesses, you know, where are the, you know, what are the weaknesses internally, what are the opportunities externally, where are the market gaps that we could identify during COVID, you know, so so that, that, that whole analysis gave us a good roadmap or a good idea where we could actually, uh, you know, grow into or expand into. Yeah, that's nice to hear that. And I also realised that a lot of businesses are also facing a lot of issue in terms of like resources. So I'm not sure whether do you actually have to relook into the processes and how you run the entire workflow in the, in the cafe? We started looking into operation processes. We started looking into the business model itself. We started looking into the branding itself, whether or not if we were to pivot and grow into the um, residential area. Will this brand that will, that the helm for the last two of years will it work with the same that you know the different demographics in the residential area? You know, so we look into all these little things and how do we outreach to more people if people are not getting out of their house? Uh, the easiest answer were to be. Um, you know, digitalize then, right? Go online, get online, get into people's phone, get into people's uh, uh, laptops, uh, and, and, and see where they get. Uh, look into e-commerce e platforms. We started to look into, you know, working out uh, or, or revamping our websites, uh, looking at social media channels, and, and so on. All, all this were new to, to Hux, right? The first six months uh, tough, uh, but it definitely gave us that, that, that resources or then that, um, the results that, that uh, basically sustain us during this difficult time, right? Sales online definitely increased. Uh, 
I mean, it only can go up when you started with no, dig no online sales rights. How did Hux charge its digitalization journey? Uh, we needed to collect uh, customers' data. It hasn't been done so for 12 years. You know, we used to sell pre-COVID, used to sell about eight to 10,000 cups a day. And those are, those are valuable data that, was, that weren't captured, right? So we, we needed to get our, our you know, um, brand name and, and at least getting people to know about us. So, you know, definitely through the digitalization, uh, first few steps, we actually managed to uh, uh, done so. You know, we you know, got people to subscribe to us, got people to view us online, on, 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 on basically uh, uh, social media and so on. And then, you know, with that signed up and of, of like uh, members and so on, um, those data was important for us because we got to learn their behavior as well to a certain extent like what their preferences are do they like coffee with milk or even with milk what kind of milk you know is it uh, the level of milk is it um, latte or is it cappuccino or someone that likes local coffee a little bit more what what do they like to pair with in terms of food and so on and so forth so all this gives us uh, uh, enough data or, or we, we start collecting all this very important raw data we start analyzing them and that helps us to even further strategize where we should be heading towards in terms of new outlets, for example, uh, what kind of promotions we should be doing, and what kind of solution providers we should be partnering with. So I think um, looking into, in, you know, taking the first few steps and looking at the early stage of, of, of uh, digitalization in terms of our journey, right? Besides identifying the different touch points or different data points that we needed to, to you know, so-called enhance. Uh, one common uh, thing among all the solutions or among technology is obviously connectivity, right? If you're not connected, you can forget about having an ecosystem. You, if you're not connected, you can't communicate. Evidently, uh, we have to look for a, a, a great partner or a good partner that, that actually can go, give us, uh, provide us what we need in terms of connectivity. In the past, we didn't need we didn't really look into connectivity uh, or internet or even AP points like access points. The uh, reason being is because in the past, our outlet, you know, the first 12, 12 years, right, uh, was mainly takeaway kiosks. For, uh, the cafe was a lot smaller in size uh, because, you know, the fast-paced uh, lifestyle in the CBD area or the business district, right, nobody really got time to sit down to chat too long. They just grab and go. Um, so we, needed, we didn't have all, uh, looked into all these things, but as we pivoted the business, as we expanded to the residential area, it's a very different ballgame, you know, uh, people wanted to sit down wanted to relax, wanted to dine in. So our outlets got bigger and bigger, right? Uh, from a 200 square feet, 300 square feet to a 3,000 square feet kind of space. That's 10 times bigger. Um, so you need to connect your devices, obviously. With your new POS system, your new CRM system, and so on and so forth, so many devices. Um, so many different solutions on the back end running, uh, we need to connect them seamlessly. So having great connectivity is one thing uh, in terms of the solution provider, network provider, but at the same time, making sure the network actually gets to every part of that, that uh, premise that you have, right? That, that cafe space they have. Uh, because nobody wants a, a data to be dropped off or, you know, as a consumer, if you're trying to make an order and and you can't log on or you can't get the order through, uh, that would be extremely frustrating. So, you know, this, this uh, again, uh, having SPTEL to actually provide us with that network and then, of course, introducing us to their partner Aruba uh, for their AP, for their access points. I mean, uh, those are the value-added services or value-added points that, that made this partnership um, so much more uh, efficient, I guess, and so much more uh, enjoyable. CCTV, for example, it was introduced by SPTEL as well uh, in terms of their, their partners, right? And the capability of the CCTV could actually go into more than just security reason. It also gives you uh, knowledge and data, such as like heat mapping. You can see where your consumer norm, you know, normally likes to sit. You can optimize your sitting plan, your sitting area. You could be able uh, to basically recognize your customer's demographic. Most people would wonder why you would choose a relatively unknown company like Espitel to help you in your transformation journey. So what do you have to say about that? I would say that the difference, the main difference is not just in terms of the partnership, the service provided. They also have different uh, products as well, which makes it way more than just an uh, internet provider. 
direct their managed services, which we desperately needed. Didn't have a good, uh, 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 you know, we weren't uh, you know, having an IT team or strong suit in, in technology, right? So managed services and advisors and consultation were important for us. And then, of course, then, uh, they have certain products like your, your bandwidth from demand and things like that which was great for a business like ours because sometimes you might have an event uh, that's going to happen at your outlet and you needed to boost your bandwidth and you can actually get on to you know purchase more bandwidth you know, on demand then things like that will actually help the business to have more flexibility and in today's day and age especially during the pandemic flexibility and adaptation uh, adaptability is, is, is so important being able to mow and change on the go it's so important. We change the whole environment in there to have an event space. We have an amphitheatre in our, our, our cafe. We have a members lounge in our cafe. And the space can be transformed into different formats. Uh, and physical space transforming into different formats uh, uh, requires uh, certain support, certain uh, uh, solutions to do so, right? Um, so yeah, I think they, they, they provided us that kind of uh, room to grow. They provide us a lot of products and solutions that allows us to actually do different things. Change our concept, change our, our, our way of doing things at the cafe. So, any words of wisdom to impart to those in FMB who are looking to digitalize? I'll say that um, it doesn't matter which industry you're in, right? With FMB or any industry, um, uh, technology is key, right? Uh, embracing it is important. And it's a, it's a long-term commitment. And if you're going to commit, it, it, you got to go all the way. You can't think of it as like, let's digitalize today and not tomorrow. You can't do that. To those that uh, have the hesitation to want to take on uh, this change, to embrace this change, to digitalize, right? So it's almost like, um, you know, that, that energy that I always like to, to, to say to my team, uh, is that like, if going from your home to the office by walking takes you two hours a day uh, and you're used to it you know you're okay with it because you've been doing it all your life two hours a day every day right and in fact learning how to drive is probably going to be a challenge because at the start anything about learning is going to going to be difficult uh, so it's it, it always going to seem daunting right looking at the, the the instruments and all that like oh my god how do how am i going to drive this whole uh, uh, life uh, you know killer machine to 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 to, to work right that's, you know, so there's a challenge there and then another thing will be that you learn how to drive is one thing then you need to also be prepared to invest digitalization is an investment so you can learn how to drive and have a driver license and don't invest in a car and then that driver license is, is pointless it gets you nowhere right? it gets right? you nowhere in the end it's just a cut uh, it's just a cut in your wallet right so you still need to prepare yourself and say that look am i going to invest in buying a car right uh, and in singapore in context of course we all know it's not not cheap right so it's, it's not cheap uh, uh, investment in terms of digitalization but when you when you invest in say digitalization like in a car and get past that learning curve of, of learning how to drive and getting your license, then your journey from your work, or from home to work, that takes two hours by walking, it's going to take you maybe 10 minutes. And that's a lot of time saved. And in that analogy, it's just basically digitalization, going to save you a lot of time, going to make things a lot more efficient. For those that, that are worried about the change, it's not impossible. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely agree with you. Yeah. And it's really my pleasure to have you with me. And also, um, uh, this is really a great session. And yeah. also to learn from you, a great learning today yeah. about the whole journey, how Hugs Coffee has actually adopted and also uh, go through the entire journey of digitalization. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Susan, yeah, for having me here. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very pragmatic uh, video sharing that we have there uh, between Susan and uh, Hao Ming, but that's not the end. Uh, we are having both of them live here within this webinar itself. So can I take the opportunity to invite Susan and Hao Ming back online to join us? Hi, Hao Ming. Hi, how are you? Yes, hello. Hi, hi, Chris. Yeah. Hey, great to have you with us uh, together with Susan. Yeah. So I just want a, a quick note to the participants here. We are running on a very tight schedule over here. 
But yeah. if you have any questions after watching that the interview section, right, uh, uh, between Susan and Hao Ming, if you have any questions for them, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A section. Uh, we hope to address them, but if we don't, rest assured that uh, we will actually get back to you offline uh, uh, after the event itself. So uh, just to catch on with time, right, uh, my first question is actually to Hao Ming. Uh, so with the uh, recent loosening of the regulations, right, when it comes to dining in, everybody is now fully out. Uh, has it led to a, a change in focus for your strategy uh, for your business in any way? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Chris, for the, the questions. And uh, thanks for having me here as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, definitely there's a there's a change in terms of the way we, we looked at the, in terms of strategy, in terms of the way we run our business. I think over the last two years, change has been, you know, become a part and parcel of a habit already. You know, every other day, every other week, every other month, there's always something new or some new curveball being thrown. So I think we, uh, uh, you know, have come to understand and accepted that we need to be adaptive. So likewise, I think the shift from pre-COVID to COVID days was a huge change. Obviously, we had to change our strategy. We had to restructure ourselves. We had to pivot as well and actually uh, plan and execute certain things, right, in different phases and so on. So. Likewise, right now, I think uh, moving out of COVID as we proceed to reopen and, and have loosening of, of, of measures and somewhat getting back to uh, normal life. But I'll say that normal, it's, it's a very subjective word right now. It's, it's, it's a new normal, right? It's, right. it's a way of, new way of living, new way of uh, consumer behavior. People have changed in their, their, their lifestyle, in the way they purchase certain things. And as well as also, I think most people have um, looked into uh, online uh, purchases, you know, they have gotten used to scanning QR codes and are a lot more tech savvy because of COVID, right? So definitely as we moved out of this, uh, you know, this new phase and uh, into reopening of Singapore and reopening of businesses, we have to adjust our thinking as well. Uh, the consumers, uh, you know, are they, are they, uh, back to pre-COVID days in the way they consume or have they have they changed as well. So right now, I think we, you know, the, the, the phase we are in is uh, is very timely because during COVID, we really started digitalizing, right? Phase two right now where we are moving out of it, we are primed for, for, for this change right now. So we have the connectivity all, all set up. We have devices all set up, you know, that allows the consumer to be a lot more, uh, to allow them to have a seamless experience at our outlet, both hybrid in terms of physical uh, uh, outlets, in terms of buying things uh, as a walk-in customer or even online as well. So I think uh, definitely we are shifting in terms of our, our strategy, but um, I would say that in business, nothing is constant. Uh, the only constant is change. So definitely uh, uh, just you know adapting as we go. Thank you, Haming. Thanks for the sharing. Yeah. Uh, now my next question is actually to uh, Susan, right? Susan, so Susan, I think, uh, how the SG SPTEL support hubs in their transformation journey? Is it is, is it something that's very simple, just like a snap of a button, you know, just some, some just a few quotations and stuff, and and, and things just fly, or, or or there's actually much more details actually in the whole implementation journey? Can you share more with us? I think um, thanks, uh, Chris, for the questions. I think uh, uh, if you ask how me and myself, I think this is a very uh, close kind of interactive uh, partnership. I would say. Because um, it is not just that um, you you know you go to someone and say hey hey I need this solution and give it to me, right? So it is about to understand and also to go through this whole journey together with uh, Hao Ming's team and and I've thanked to uh, Hao Ming and also his team for their trust in the sense that um, they allow us to to actually go through the whole phase on planning to understand what is their actual requirement their existing environment their infrastructure, existing infrastructure, and also to understand what is the, the steps is also the, the, the goal. Because for digitalization, as what well, Hao say, right, it's not a one day kind of affair. It is also, it's actually a long-term kind of planning because as just now in the video, Hao also mentioned that digitalization needs investment. Investment in time, investment in terms of the learning experience going through the whole journey. Right, and of course, um, cost is also important in the sense when we make certain decision. So when we work with Hao Min's team, it's also a very close kind of partnership where we go in together with the team to understand the current environment, to then understand that what is most important to them to start with, 
right? So for example, we understand that, oh, now they have this um, uh, requirement to increase the complexity and the concern of, of uh, having a cybersecurity concern on the data collection for their customers, right? Through the CRM. So how we can address that? So we match all these uh, available solutions, right? Whether within us or through our partners, we aggregate them together and then try to make it efficient as well as uh, suitable and how means or rather ca uh, house cafe environment. So for example, in the video as well, uh, Hami also mentioned that um, in the house, it is not just a normal cafe. They also sometimes will have to change the, the space or utilize the space more efficiently by transferring the, it into maybe an event space. So in the terms of event space, then Hamis and teams will require a, a more bandwidth or more uh, kind of a solution to for that particular a uh, few hours of events, right? So how flexible, uh, how um, adaptive uh, the solution or the partnership it can be to support the instant requirement or rather the ad hoc requirement like this. So for example, um, the bandwidth on demand or cyber security services on demand and also the DDoS uh, attack that is always there for, for uh, how many and team to utilize it and or, or activate it uh, when there is a need, right? And instead of the usual, uh, you have to subscribe to a constant number of months of contract, they could easily uh, um, having it, you know, just to mitigate or rather to have the solution for maybe a few hours or a few uh, a few days. So that kind of flexibility and scalability, uh, I think is very important in a way uh, for a digitalization kind of journey, right? So I, I would think that this is how uh, I hope that the, the whole journey humming is enjoyable for you. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to a partnership, I, I would say that uh, one of the key things that makes a partnership successful is it has to be a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, it needs to be enjoyable because um, it's it's a relationship, right? You you can't uh, you know create uh, value and, and, and positivity in terms of change if the relationship isn't healthy. You know, so so it is definitely one of the key things that, that makes a partnership uh, successful. Yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks for the inputs. So, uh, how many? Before I let you off, right? I understand you are very busy. So I'm just going to yeah. ask one final question, right? Is uh, with the with the rapid expansion and digitalization of hubs, right? Are there any concerns that your staff may not be on board with the changes? There was a similar question re relating to manpower. So I'm using this yeah. to to just ask you. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so I mean, uh, for sure, right? So, I mean, being humans, we are all habitual creatures. So, you know, having the, I mean, naturally, people are not uh, receptive to change, uh, you know, because once you're in your comfort zone, once you are used to a routine or used to a certain way of doing things, it's difficult to change that mindset, right? So, but it's not impossible, like I said uh, in, in the video as well. What I, what I meant by that is that it can, something can be learned, something can be adjusted and, and, and molded as we go. It just needs to be planned out in phases, in steps. Because just like when you went through education as well, you don't just jump straight to, you know, from primary one, you just jump straight to secondary four. You don't do that, right? You, you go like different levels. So similarly, I think with our staff and uh, on grounds on different levels and all that, uh, they have their resistance, they have their uh, queries. So it's about having, building an environment and a culture where nurturing and, 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 and um, basically uh, addressing such concerns and issues in, in a healthy environment will be uh, paramount to, to, to help, you know, assisting in the change, basically. So these are uh, some of the steps that we, we definitely have taken. So we make sure that we explain to them education is super important, awareness is super important. important. So you don't just dump a new solution and just say that, look, uh, you don't have to understand this, just follow the order. No, we don't do that. We explain to the staff, why is this helpful to them? Why would this make their life better? Why would this assist their day-to-day -day, uh, operation and, and, and allow them to do something more than just their, their current tasks or uh, current day-to-day -day operation? So things like that will help them to rationalize, internalize within themselves and come to this realization that, oh my God, uh, the company is actually doing something to help my life, help my career. And, 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 and if I'm not on board with this, then what, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So of course, 
you know, by and large, you know, as, as, as they go by, as you do, trying to make changes and so on, there will be always people who will relapse and, 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 and want, you know, start to question, hey, why, why, why do we need to do this and do that? Uh, again, have for people to do feedback, for your, for your employees to do feedback and address them seriously, address them uh, tactfully as well. And as a team, you know, we are able to uh, move forward together and remind them that we are only doing this with the same goal in mind, and that is to have a better tomorrow. So this is these are all the things, thought process that we, we, we have as we look into this. I mean, just to answer the, the, the question that was asking uh, previously about manpower and all that, of course, there's, there's, there's manpower is always an issue, right? I mean, with any industry, especially service line, manpower, there's always a crunch. Pre-COVID or now, no difference. Of course, the challenge right now, the, the slope right now is a lot steeper. But uh, it's not impossible. You just have to adapt and have to change as you go. So um, never get fixated on one strategy. Never get fixated on one management style. You have to be able to uh, have the flexibility to allow change, which means having an open mind, uh, having the, the also at the same time, that kind of uh, mindset where you, you know that it's okay to change. Right? It's okay to, to be a little bit different uh, and, and think out of the box. right? Uh, I'm not sure if you all want me to answer the other question. I think there's another question on, on uh, should I get into that as well? No, I think it's fine. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the question, I mean, it was asked in terms of like, if, if, if it's not for COVID, will we still digitalize our operation? Of course. Uh, it's not because of COVID. That's why we digitalize. I, uh, I think in today's day and age, um, technology is part and parcel of our life. Right, whether you like it or not, it's integrated with our life, right? Your kids, your your uh, your even your grandparents are using WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, and so on. My my mom goes to a uh, uh, community center to learn how to use Facebook and Instagram because at the end of the day, you cannot deny technology. It is there, right? Which means that if the sooner we embrace this, the sooner we accept this, the better it is for everyone, right? So uh, COVID just accelerated certain things. It was almost like a catalyst to get into certain conversations where maybe you have taken longer, but I see it as a good thing, right? It helped to push uh, certain changes. Uh, it, it helped uh, uh, people to also uh, shift their mindset a lot quicker. So I see it as a catalyst for change, which is great, right? It, it's a catalyst for innovation as well. So with or without COVID, we definitely have digitalized. It assists with, uh, with our operations, day-to-day -day operation. It also allows us to have better productivity, better efficiency, and that opens up more time and room to actually grow into, into much more than what we are right now. So, um, yeah, all I can say is digitalization is something that we have to embrace. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Homi. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it means your busy schedule uh, with us today. So, uh, uh, we'll catch you another time at Hux Coffee. So, so, without further ado, let's move on to our next speaker right now. Our next speaker is Mr. Jonathan Lim. Head and Transformation uh, Program Office at Singapore Pools. So uh, Jonathan is a passionate and about making a difference in life and constantly sets his sights on reaching new heights through innovation and collaborations. He sees every problem as an opportunity to bring out the best in every staff as they are the most important asset to your organization. Without further ado, let's go into the interview segment with Jonathan. Hi, I'm Susan, VP of Marketing, Business Development and Customer Experience of SPTEL. Thank you for joining us in our Homegrown with Digital Age Leadership Sharing Series. Today, I'm very glad to have Jonathan, the Head of Transformation Program Office in Singapore Pools with us. He will share with us some of the key challenges that face by large retail chain uh, like them uh, in Singapore. Thank you, Susan, for inviting me. All right, so maybe you would like to share a little bit about yourself? I hate the transformation program office in Singapore Pools for the last two years. It has been a very exciting journey uh, with three portfolios. The first one is actually the uh, project execution office, you know, which uh, is responsible for delivering the big scale projects that we have. Uh, the second responsibility is more on the capabilities governance. What are the 
initiatives that we should be building you know in the next 12 to 18 months and the last is of course the most exciting one the transformation office which uh, is supposed to provide the brain power and the in innovations you know to what are the new stuffs that we can actually look at wow that's a very interesting role um, I know that most of us know Singapore Pools but maybe you would like to give us a little bit more on the background of Singapore Pools yes I think Singapore Pools uh, is more commonly known as a uh, lottery company but what is less known is our main uh, primary uh, objective of combating illegals that is to actually avoid the monies going to illegals but channeling towards good and charitable causes so just a simple fact you know for every dollar that's actually contributed 27 cents actually goes back towards uh, Texas as well as charities and communities. If you talk of the, our ex National Stadium, uh, Esplanade, uh, Gardens by the Bay, I think these are all monies that are actually funded you know, through our revenue. So what's your view on digitalization? So what is the digital strategy that Singapore Pools is adopting? Since our transformation journey started in 2018, we sort of embarked on a fire roadmap, you know, in terms of uh, looking into various areas. You know, primarily is to actually looking at the core of the business. That means the engine itself. How do we establish a digital operation backbone? And then from there, uh, uh, how do we actually create new digital offerings, you know, which we had our uh, SPA account, which is our Singapore Pools app, you know, uh, in 2019 itself. And also uh, most recently really looking at uh, refreshing some of our critical systems. So this will help us to actually create the foundation for us to rapidly create new value proposition for the customer. So what spurs this drive for Singapore Pool to adopt this digital, go digital kind of mission? So when when the whole world moves to digital, actually we we do expect that even the illegals, you know, are becoming more savvy. And I think uh, from a sing pool standpoint, it's important that we are on par. You know, in terms of creating that very simple customer journey, it makes it simple, it makes it attractive for the customer to say that, hey, I do want to continue to stay with Singapore Pools. Right. So I also understand from you that uh, Singapore Pool, in fact, has a very important mission. That is to contribute back to the society through the charity organization. So maybe we'd like to share with us, you know, how charity organization leverage on tech to improve the way they work as well as how they interact with the within the organizations as well as to improve the operation efficiency as well. All right. So we had this uh, program called iShine. Uh, which actually uh, creates the infrastructure as well as the technology offering uh, for charity players. You know, what, what it means is that charities no longer have to invest heavily in, on technology, you know, back-end infrastructure, servers and stuff. And to them, they can then really focus on serving uh, the charities that need. On the other hand, Singpools ourselves also have invested in new technology. For example, we have the volunteer management system, which, which is owned by us, which in a way allows our customers to be able to participate in volunteer activities through Singapore Pools. I see. So besides this, so what other digital initiatives that you can see that's happening in the other part of the organization? Currently, we are uh, in the progress of you know, and enabling uh, capabilities like MyInfo, uh, SingPass for onboarding to Singapore Pools app. You know, we are also creating a new uh, value propositions you know, to target spe at specific segments as well as customer journeys. And one of the biggest uh, big things that we are currently also looking at is in terms of revamping the UI UX, user experience you know, and user interface. I think a lot of organizations, um, particularly uh, commercial organizations, have embarked on this journey some years back in terms of creating simplicity. So you mentioned about customer experience. So um, 
besides on the digital front end, how about at the branch? I noticed that you all also have many, many branches. Yes. Yeah, so is, is there anything that leverage on tech to improve the customer experience? As definitely, well? definitely. When we look at our customers, um, the traditional view has been these are retail customers and there's the remote customers. Mm -hmm. Remote customers saying, uh, pointing to those who use the app. Mm -hmm. But we realise that we can't really define customers as such mm -hmm. because today customers move between remote and retail. If I am a remote customer, when I go to the branch, Singapore Pool still know it is me at the branch. And how do I create that similar less omni-channel experience. So we are really exploring how do we leverage on technology to augment or re-engineer the customer's journey. You know, having self-service options, having uh, um, capabilities where you are able to tell whether the customer is within the branch itself. It could be for ticket checking, price claiming, or even uh, transaction services. Mm -hmm. We're also considering bringing in the charity portion into the branch itself. And customers who are at the branches have the option of uh, knowing you know through uh, information sharing or even participating mm -hmm. like for example signing up as one of our volunteers you know so this would actually create a more holistic omni-channel experience for our customer so what are the tech um, that you think that you have already adopted in, in improving uh, or rather giving this kind of omni-channel kind of uh, experience okay. if you are looking at really implementing things that are agile I think this is going to be one of the challenges. Leveraging on technologies like edge processing, edge cloud, this will help us to be more agile, nimble. In a way, whenever branches move, you know, we don't need to do heavy investments on you know moving all the tech together with it, and as well as uh, look, focusing on things like video analytics. But right? this will help us to be less reliant on the stuff on the ground. Wow. Okay, so I also noticed that Singapore Pools is quite big in uh, tech and also digital exploration. So would you like to share with us a little bit on how internally, how do you all support this? Okay, we do have uh, an innovation function and I think uh, happy to, to actually share that I think we have sort of grown from a uh, small team of people to large scale events. In fact, we just ended our first hackathon this year in which actually uh, 15 teams actually come up with uh, very good ideas which uh, ended in eight finalists. In fact, I think most of the ideas, you know, uh, not just the eight, but almost all the 15s were sort of uh, in the process of being incorporated into various projects. Oh. So maybe you would like to name a few of such projects that has already implemented and um, your customers or your co-workers are already enjoying? I think during the COVID, uh, we were actually one of the first to integrate facial recognition into our entry points. So with the scan of a face, actually what happens is you have check-in, you have taken your temperature, you have been registered and checked in with safe entry and with that, all done without actually taking the pass out from your bag. So you shortcut everything yes. and simplify the process. Okay, so is there any words of wisdom uh, for our audience and um, those um, who are in the business like yours? I think it's uh, important to uh, really spend time planning and really looking into both the customer value proposition as well as what the where the organization is. You know, most organizations sort of sometimes forget about the operations as a whole and then start building capabilities. But then you reach a point whereby you realize that the back end can't catch up. So for Singapore Pools, we take a two-pronged approach. While creating new value proposition for customers, we are also looking at digitizing the back end. So we've got things like robotics, uh, workflow systems, uh, uh, tools that our own staff can learn and pick up. You know, and that helps to sort of spread the work done on digitalization. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I'm very glad to have you with us today. My pleasure. Thank you.
Wow, another great interview uh, between Susan and Jonathan. So uh, likewise, it's not just a video recording here. We are happy both live here with us. So I'd like to call on Jonathan and, uh, and Susan to join us back again here for a quick Q&A. Hey, hi guys, how are you? Hi. hi. Hey Jonathan, good to see you. Thanks for the insightful sharing. So I think I'm going to start off with a very difficult question for you. I uh, hope you can help me to answer. So, uh, what, what are some of the benefits that digitization has brought for Singapore pools? Uh, the reason why I'm asking this, right, is because as, uh, as for SMEs, right, uh, the, the, they are always looking for tangible benefits, but a lot of them may not really see this uh, right up front. So we, we are hoping that you can share with us more about from Sing, Singapore pools own experience, right, the kind of benefits that you really see from this whole digitization journey that you have, you have, you have here mentioned about throughout the whole interview, yeah. All right, I think a um, couple of points in this area. Mm -hmm. I think first, uh, first thing first, um, we do measure our cost to serve. So actually we've uh, gotten some um, um, analysis and we sort of realized that the cost to serve for actually a online channel is sort of uh, roughly about 30% that of a retail. So definitely, I think as we embark on this uh, digital journey itself, uh, it is important to uh, also shift to a lower cost operating model. But of course, having, having said that, you know, it is quite impossible to be, you know, the question that most of the business would ask, you know, can I be 100% online? I think the answer is, you know, to, for most businesses would be not really. Because we've seen uh, you know, Amazon, you know, opening up their retail stores, as etc. So I think in the end, it's going to be balanced, and every business need to find what that balance is of online and retail business, and that, that's one of the benefit from a cost perspective. And, and for Singpool, because we are a non-profit organization, I think the the productivity savings uh, also go back, you know, in terms of contributing to the nation building. I think then for SMEs, I think this also comes in as a part of a bottom line or this can be actually passed on to the customer themselves. The second point, you know, in terms of digitalization is uh, more of an inward looking. First, it, I think, creates efficiency you know, within the organization itself. It helps us to actually uh, uh, create a uh, shorter time to market, you know, for new products. Uh, secondly, I think it also improves the skill sets of our staff. You know, because I think uh, for most companies, you know, um, if we have existed for a couple of decades, you know, we will be very familiar with a lot of uh, manual processes. So I think uh, it's important to introduce these tools. In fact, one of the very good examples which we had was one of our staff which actually learned how to do RPA, which is a robotic process automation, you know, managed to actually automate most of his process and sort of gain about 90 over percent productive, meaning whatever you spend 90 minutes to do, now you spend 10 minutes to do. Wow. So, so much that actually he himself is able to go and attend, you know, uh, uh, night classes to actually improve and gain additional qualification so that he may be more suitable, he may be more suited, you know, for role expansion or new roles within the organization. Mm, okay. Thanks, 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 thanks for the real concrete examples that you share mm. with there. So, so I understand that Jonathan, you brought up a lot of projects and everything, right? You mentioned wow, it's like any any any, any businesses who thought about the type of projects that you're doing, like it's like wow. So the next next question I will pass on is to Susan's side. Susan, don't you find that you know the scope that Jonathan is mentioning, right, is a bit uh wide and deep. So how does actually SVTEL, uh, what does actually SVTEL bring to the table, right, to help Jonathan on this journey, actually? Susan, can you share? Um, yeah, I think, um, thanks, Chris and Jonathan. I think when, while we had the whole conversation with Jonathan, right, to learn from him and also the, the uh, how Singapore and VCH on this entire digital uh, uh, journey, right, um, and um, we actually in a way, go through with him and his team to understand that, uh, especially for like of the branches, the, the solutions that potentially can help out at the branch end. And uh, we craft out certain solution and customize it for him in a way. So we need to understand exactly like, like just now what I mentioned about how Ming's case, right? You really need to really go through the entire journey with your 
with your partner. It is a long-term uh, relationship and also a commitment, right? So, I mean, for Jonathan and Homi, both of them are very kind to share with me what is their end goal. And then they are willing to invest some time. And of course, through this whole relationship, we're able to, to plan with them and then go through like, what is my first phase, second phase, and what is the potential uh, solution or technology we can jointly uh, co-explore co in it jointly explore into it. And then we will then see that uh, if, if this is something that we can do uh, proof of concept first, and then we can use some of this learning and then implement into a real situation. So like for example, in just now, he, I think he mentioned a little bit on each cloud as well as facial recognition. And I think in the video, it, it touches a little bit. So for us as a partner, um, that is slightly different from the usual partners that, that you, you typically see in the market is that um, we, we are quite flexible and also uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of course, everybody can say that they have the solution, right? But whether how effectively you can help uh, your uh, uh, partners to implement that e effectively and at the same time using the shortest time frame uh, to understand and, and, and go through the entire uh, uh, exploration process with, with your customer or, or partners in this case. Mm -hmm. So in, in, the, in the sense that where Jonathan mentioned that, hey, I want more video analytics, I need this data to analyze and, and be able to study and eventually form certain reports and help in the entire business transformation, right? So we, we actually, one of the, the few solutions that we brought to the table, like for example, edge computing. So just now in my portion that we mentioned about Espital really have a lot of point of presence on the whole island. So we do have uh, each locations, physical each location that we can transform it into each cloud where uh, customer like um, Jonathan's as well as Singpools will be able to tap on these benefits where you can tap on uh, cloud types of cloud-like kind of uh, compute resources to implement uh, IoT or use cases uh, load your application in there to do processing closest to your uh, um, the event location or rather the use case location. And coupled with that, to be able to provide a very low latency, just now we did mention that end to end from for the whole Singapore, from east to the west, from north to south, we're able to achieve less than one millisecond end to end latency, right? So with a very close by proximity kind of hosting environment or each cloud environment where you enjoy the benefits like uh, the, the benefits of a, a very affordable commercial model to actually optimize the, the deployment cost if let's say you have a lot of location we can centralize this into multiple zone to to deploy each concept and then this edge will also be able to help uh, uh, businesses like Singpools to deploy not just one use case but multiple use case and do the processing on site, which means you actually can physically see the 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 edge, uh, unlike you know you put into a cloud where you most likely will not know where is it, and and you can't have a feel and also enforce certain um, security or certain optimization on it. So with our physical edge as well as the compute power with the low latency, we are able to to um, able to help uh, Jonathan's team to. Uh, deploy a very effective in terms of optimized, in terms of cost deployment, as well as effective in the sense that he's no longer need to deploy so many manpower, you know, and man hour to manage uh, all the branches that they have, you know, uh, and deploy all this equipment. So we, we do see the, the benefits in that. And hence, we are going to, uh, after this one particular use case, we are going to try other use cases as well using the same resources. So in a way, you, you maximize the investment and optimize the cost, right? And coupled with that, um, like what Hao Ming just now mentioned, over here, we also enforce that uh, there are so cybersecurity concerns. So with the connectivity, with the data has to transmit, transmit to the uh, and process over to the network, to the edge cloud, we also have to ensure that whatever connectivity is there has to be uh, clean pipe as well as a, some managed uh, security solutions in place as well. So I hope I, I have answered most of it, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. Actually, to add on, I think it, this sort of creates a uh, foundation you know, for, for 
really uh, future solutions. I think that this is uh, one of the key things that I think uh, that arises from this collaboration. Yeah. So Jonathan, you're talking about future solutions, right? Just want to add on to your, that pointer that you have. Mm -hmm. What other technologies are Singapore, uh, Singapore Pools exploring actually? Yeah. Um, depend on how much time you have. <laughs> okay. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. Just to name, just to name a few. I think we have embarked on a um, facial recognition, uh, and some video analytics itself. I think in a uh, we have also gone uh, cloud. You know, um, uh, in some of our uh, 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 core systems. So I think this is something that uh, um, which is uh, quite challenging just for us as a. Uh, uh, quite uh, tightly regulated you know, business. I think this is definitely something that uh, we uh, are looking closely uh, into this itself. And then also in terms of uh, various areas like cybersecurity, you know, automated testing, uh, even how we really look at the uh, uh, platforms, various platforms, you know, um, uh, yeah, making use of uh, microservices and, and such. Actually, there's really a lot of stuff that we are looking at. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that. I believe that well, those are really very technical stuff. But I think there's one thing that really strikes me is that uh, sustainability is actually a very big topic coming up. So, so uh, is there any key initiatives that, that is actually driving Singapore Post to actually look deeper into this area as well? Um, yes, I think this topic is not new. In fact, I think for, for us, uh, we, have, uh, bad, we have been a while on this digital journey. In fact, um, uh, since 2019, we have uh, sort of uh, started to look at how we digitize our internal processes. You know, we have uh, over 190 processes in all that we have collated, and we are sort of at the tail end, you know, with probably the last 25%, uh, you know, uh, in terms of getting these uh, processes digitalized. It helped us a lot during the COVID because, um, take for example, you know, memos, papers, you know, contracts. Uh, used to be floated around, you know, pre-COVID easily, you know, you just go to a different floor. But when COVID hit us, you know, um, it, we really had to, you know, tune up or be gear up, you know, in terms of uh, such digitalization uh, efforts. You know, and we sort of created the possibility of uh, in creating internal workflows and stuff, at which allow our staff to continue to work from home. So this is really amazing. You know, uh, uh, and a big change that our staff was also getting used to. And as we accelerate in this pace, you know, we are sort of moving towards a, almost a paperless back end. So this is uh, something that we the staff are pretty proud of. Um, we are also uh, big on going green, you know, in terms of uh, BCA, you know, uh, certified, you know, we are the BCA certified building. And we are, in fact, also, uh, we do have solar panels on our roof, you know, and we're also sort of looking at, you know, uh, even uh, recycling rainwater and stuff. So sustainability is uh, really and uh, uh, big on our on on our agenda. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for sharing on that note because I think uh, Singapore Pools is actually a very big has a very big footprint around Singapore. It's glad yeah. to hear that uh, the company is actually engaging very deeply into uh, sustainability. So I think with that, uh, Jonathan, before we wrap up the session, right, I would just think to trouble you to just give three three, three use three words, right to summarize uh, what you think our audience should look into regarding their retail business, digitalization, and also uh, partnership with, with any uh, IT providers. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably what comes to mind, the first one is probably exciting. I think um, the COVID has definitely brought you know, many uh, unexpected challenges, you know, especially for retail. Know, in terms of how the business is going to sustain, you know, the type of uh, uh, cost and price models that most uh, companies have to rethink. Um, uh, the second one is actually uh, probably ecosystem. I believe that you know no business stands alone. You know, we we can't do everything ourselves. You know, uh, we can't provide all the solutions ourselves. And um, I think it's we have sort of moved into an era of uh, ecosystems. You know, where partnerships are important, you know, the interdependencies uh, are very much looked into, you know, how, how a business complements another one and how we sort of, you know, uh, look at um, um, 
why where the synergies are, you know, and where the gaps are, you know, to fill. And I, I think this is an important uh, view that you know most businesses have to really start thinking about. The last one is probably uh, I will use the word experimentation. I think while we are embarking on this digital journey, I think it is important that we do have the spirit of uh, exploration and uh, sort of concept testing and our pilots because um, this is really a change, you know, in the from the traditional way of um, implementing IT solutions, you know, where you just buy, you test, and then you deploy. You know, in today's term, uh, we really have to really design around the customer, you know, what the journey is and how do we constantly tweak that so that it becomes simple, it becomes uh, seamless, and most important is enjoyable. Thank you, Jonathan, for putting such a good summary on all those three pointers. Thank you so much. So uh, now back to Susan. Uh, your yeah. last words regarding the topic today, accelerating retail digitization. Susan, any final words for our audience here? I think um, for digitalization, um, a lot of people were talking about accelerating it, right? How do we even start um, the digitalization journey is very important because before you can accelerate it, you have to embrace it uh, in the sense that you have to have all the buy-in from every angle, okay, right? Um, the, to overcome the learning curve, to overcome the first initial uh, is also um, sometimes it's challenging, right? Then once you have a uh, proper planned out, uh, I think a solution is not a problem, right? So we, we did talk a little bit, uh, I mean, at length, that how the entire digitalization journey is not, you know, it's just, just a one day or two day if, uh, affair, and you can't actually implement something and you can straight away meet the goalpost, you know? So it is a learning try and then <clears throat> smoothen and then sustain the whole journey so that you can reach to the, at least a certain milestone that you want. So it's, it's a keep learning because technology, you can't say that, well, today I implemented the best technology. You can't say that because it's ever changing, it's ever improving, right? So all of us, uh, that's what uh, Jonathan has mentioned, ecosystem is important. As a, as a so solution provider, we're also learning from our customer, learning from Jonathan. You, it's only through their use case, through their actual deployments and their deep needs, then we can um, fine tune and use it creatively using the technology to, to solve the problem, right? To address the issue and make it um, efficient. Uh, I mean, to deploy efficiently for, to, to address certain concerns. So, I mean, technology is always there, is solution is always there because there is a pain point, there is a requirement. So I would think that it's a constant learning. Um, so at least you have to, uh, start somewhere. If you if you're still always planning, you know, it's always planning. That is always, it always remain as a planner. Okay, that's all. Thank you, thank you, Susan. Thanks for the roundup. So, uh, just 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 my personal takeaway. I think uh, I can see Jonathan, you know, and Hush Coffee embarking on their whole digitalization journey, right? But to me, I, I only have one worry: is my internet connection going to be up? Yeah, as uh -huh. we go more digital, right? I think the internet connection becomes a very critical uh, critical foundation, basically. And the ability to scale is also very important. So, so I think uh, as everyone, uh, you know, go ahead with the digitization plan, always remember your backbone. Is your backbone able to, able to support and is it resilient enough, especially with more devices and everything going on board, right? You, you need a really solid and resilient pipe in order to support all your digitization journey. So uh, I think First of all, I'd just like to thank Susan, uh, Jonathan, as well as Hao Ming, who has left us uh, for the insightful sharing session today. I hope the uh, participants here have benefited from all the insightful sharing. So uh, with that, I would like to thank everybody and uh, hope to see you soon in our future events. Thank you all so much. Goodbye.